also reveal to us the various consequences um, uh, that sin has upon us, right? Um, so again, with the prodigal son story, if sin brings me to poverty, it alienates me from the house of God, right? It, it gets me to question my identity in Christ, right? Um, with the Samaritan woman, she was also alienated from the, from the whole community because of her sin, um, or from the church in general. So it, and, and also she didn't understand the proper worship. He had to teach her the, the, the worship of spirit and truth. Right, so sin affects my worship, with, my relationship with God. Um, today, it brought him sickness. It doesn't always bring sickness, um, as we'll see next Sunday. Um, but how do we know this? The Lord actually tells him something indirectly, um, or even directly after the healing, when, when he finds him in the temple. He says, "Sin no more, lest the worst can come upon you." So he gives him a, a hint that part of your problem is is sin, and that's why you're sick. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, and next week we'll see um, how sin also causes blindness, causes blindness, not with the blindness of the blind man, but the Lord actually calls out the blindness of the Pharisees next week. Um, <clears throat> and he he'll tells them, you say we have no sin or we see, therefore your sin remains. So if you think you know it all, then you have sin. That's what he was basically telling them. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, but focusing on the gospel of today, um, this was a great miracle that the Lord did. But sometimes when the Lord he heals, we see great virtue in the person. And sometimes uh, the evangelist may point out also some of the weaknesses because we are filled with both. We are not perfect human beings. And even in the gospel, even the stories of uh, in, in, in the Holy Scripture, we see the, the limitation and the weaknesses of the people that the God deals with, whether the Old or the New Testament. And that should bring us actually hope because we're just like them, or they're just like us. <clears throat> so the problem of the guy today was what? He had many issues besides being sick. One of them was sin, as we, as we uh, noticed, right? Um, <clears throat> what does the Lord ask him first? Do you want to be made well? Right? We spoke about this before, so we won't go too much in, in, in details. Right? And he responds saying, uh, no one's helping me. No one cares about me. I try. The angel comes. Um, no, this, he didn't even answer the question. Right? And sometimes, and he was, felt sorry for himself. Um, and he probably had given up some time along that 38 years. It's a long time. Um, <clears throat> and um, he was probably very bitter or angry, not only towards others, but maybe even toward God, right? And sometimes, and, and this reflects us too, right? Sometimes we feel sorry for ourselves when it comes to our spiritual life or the troubles that we are going through, right? And instead of when God asks us, do you want to be made well? We start complaining. So, you know, here's the circumstance. Here's the issue. Where, where are the people? Where is God, right? Um, <clears throat> and so... We get frustrated with God because we think either he's ignoring us or he's upset at us or he's playing hide and seek. And, and the problem is not with the circumstances. The problem is not with God. The problem is with me, right? Um, <clears throat> and so we have to turn our eyes inward um, before we start looking outward or even looking up to God um, because oftentimes the problem is right before us, right inside of us. Um, and that's what we need God to help with, not with the problem outside, but the problem that's inside. And so God blesses us even with a lot of things in our life to remind us of, of, of these problems that, that are in, in our hearts and in our minds. Um, <clears throat> the funny thing is that the people here are criticizing God for doing a work on the Sabbath. And oftentimes we criticize God for not working at all. Right? And, and what does he say? about work. He says, my father has been working until now, and I have been working. I'm not sleeping. Um, uh, actually, that, that's another story we'll get to in, in, in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but before we take the leap of faith, I think it's important for us, us to take a, a step back or to zoom out and to, and to get a good look of what we're doing. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes when you're searching for something 
uh, online and you see the, the box that's highlighted and you click on it before you even read what's in it, right? Sometimes we're like, okay, I have to take action. Hold on a second and get a good understanding of, of what, yeah, what, is, um, what the events uh, have to do or what God is trying to tell us before we take action. <clears throat> um, and also, it, it gives us opportunity to look at what God has done for us or who God is or what God is really concerned about relating this issue. <clears throat> um, and importantly, God is never resting. He rested on the cross, but even on the cross, he was doing a great work for us that we couldn't see, right? Um, <clears throat> and he never said it, it is finished until he, he completed the salvation on, on the Holy Cross. And even when he said that, he was still preparing a place for us, okay? Um, <clears throat> uh, and the, he was preparing the greatest feat of all, which the greatest feast of all was the Holy Resurrection, even after he said um, that the work uh, is done, at least on earth. Um, <clears throat> so some, the, peop the people were criticizing God for why are you doing work on the Sabbath? Actually, the whole purpose of, uh, one of the main purposes of the Sabbath was to get us to stop doing things physically so we could see what God is doing spiritually, right? Um, <clears throat> and... Um, these are issues actually of faith and sin, but not of the power of man, but not of the power and care of God. So, so sometimes we, we look at problems and, say, and we accuse people or even accuse God of not being strong enough or not caring enough. Um, but the problem is more the lack of faith um, or the, the weakness of man. <clears throat> so, um, and we think that God is sleeping. There's a story in the gospel, I'm sure you all already know it, in the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 4, in which the disciples are working, and they're in the boat, right? And there's a great storm, and where's Christ? He's asleep in the, uh, in, in the stern on a pillow. And even the gospel says the man has, son of man has no place to rest his head. Right? <clears throat> Was he really sleeping? Physically, yes, maybe. But as God, he's always working. Um, does he know what's going on? For sure. Um, uh, and they said, what did they say to him? They woke him and said to him, teacher or master or rabbi, don't you care that we are perishing? You don't care. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. And this is probably the same question that the man was saying today. Um, I have no one that cares for me, even God forgot about me. In a sense, this is what he's saying. Um, and I think this is also what we say sometimes in our trials and tribulations and temptations, saying that, God, don't you care what I'm, what I'm going through? Of course he cares. Um, but he cares more for um, what is to become of, this, of you going through this situation. He wants us to go through the situation, and he has a reason. What's the reason? We might not know um, in the beginning, but oftentimes we know towards the end of that trial. <clears throat> Right, um, and so, um, so the question isn't um, if God has the power, why didn't He help me? We know God has the power. Um, uh, sometimes, it, well, why doesn't God have the power? He does, but He, he has a reason. So, what's the reason? Um, and why doesn't He care enough to help? That's what we ask. But the real question um, when we when we complain in our suffering is, um, why are you allowing this? How are you okay? with me being paralyzed for 38 years or for losing my health or my family or my friends. This is what the guy was basically asking. Um, <clears throat> you're even depriving me of the, the stirring of the water and the angel. Um, so, so when the disciples um, said, teacher, don't you care that we are perishing? What happened? He rose, he rebuked the wind and said to it, peace be still. Um, and he fixed the problem very quickly, very easily and then turned to them and rebuked his disciples. Right? He said to them, why are you so fearful? I think that's the real question. Not, don't look at the problem. Say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> why, why are you responding in this way? Um, he says, how is it that you have no faith? Right? And that, that's the issue. The issue with this man, the issue with us when we start to complain uh, to God. Um, <clears throat> uh, and so the two things that we're usually lacking when we start this cycle is peace and faith. Um, and uh, 
God is always working. And even uh, St. Paul says, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. God who started this is going to complete it. And he's not talking about the works outside, but the work inside of you. Um, and a lot of these issues are to help continue the work inside of you. You said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm okay like this. I don't need this problem. I, I can learn my lesson another way. Um, maybe, but probably God has already given you other opportunities to learn this lesson another way, and you didn't take it. So that's why he has to use other methods. Um, <clears throat> and so um, God has the power to heal. He has the power to solve the problem. He has the power to remove the burden. But there is something in us that, or something that we need to learn. Um, and it's an opportunity for growth or blessing or healing or learning or purification, right? So, so this problem, this issue, this suffering is like what some of the fathers say is the hidden teacher, right? So suffering is a hidden teacher. It's a doctor. It's a farmer and a trainer and a priest. How, why do I, I'm saying these things? Because sometimes suffering leads, teaches us something, right? Or suffering might heal us from, from a specific weakness or sin that we have. Or it might be something that leads to growth. It's a seed that is planted in us that will bear good fruits later on. Um, or it trains us to help us get stronger in, in something. So if, if, if it's all of these things, then we shouldn't avoid it, but accept it as a gift from God. It's, it's a hard thing to, 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 to accept. Um, I I'm first and foremost know this, um, but when we remember this uh, in, in, in the background, when the suffering or tribulation come, then we try to accept it patiently and bear with it until God reveals the, one of these purposes um, of, for this trial and tribulation. <clears throat> so through it, I may become wiser, healthier, stronger, um, and holier as well. Um, so tribulations are important, and that's why um, in the book of Acts, the, the apostle says, we must, through tribulations, many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Um, kind of like, you know, when the Lord says in, in, the, in the third hour, he says, every branch that bears fruit, he what? He prunes. Why? That it may bear more fruit. She's saying, look, God, I'm bearing fruit. Okay, I'm going to prune you. <laughs> I'm going to make you carry the cross a little more. Why? Because I want you to bear even more fruit. Um, <clears throat> no, it's okay. This is enough fruit. No, no. <laughs> I, I want you to, to even be better and more perfected. Um, until, and when it's enough, then I'll take you. <laughs> um, and so uh, even the problems and trials and tribulations, and when you go to the end of the story, it's not that God didn't care, but he cares so much. He wanted you to go through this so more fruit can be revealed. <clears throat> um, I'll just read a, a passage from the book of Isaiah re relating to this. Even this was an issue in the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> so God, in a sense, is speaking in Isaiah chapter 63. So there's there's a big transition that happens in the book of Isaiah towards the end. So it's, it's a long book. And a lot of people like to, to read it during uh, this great length. It's about 66 chapters and so towards around chapter 40 you see the transition <laughs> um and a lot of people also like to read the book of job but the transition is much even later than than, than halfway um but in in the book of the chapter 63 verse 7 it says i'll mention the loving kindnesses of the lord and the praises of the lord according to all that the lord has bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of israel Keep in mind, when, when Isaiah is writing this, there's not much great goodness that can be seen physically, <laughs> okay? Um, which, has, which he has bestowed on them according to his mercies, according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. Notice that just the emphasis here of the loving kindness um, and the mercy and the compassion and the, uh, of, of God. He says, for he said, surely they are my people, children who will not lie. So he became their savior. Again, this concept of salvation is, is prevalent in all of Scripture, even in the Old Testament before Christ took flesh, um, uh, which after 
he, he was incarnate and died on the cross, then people began to realize, oh, God has been trying to tell us this all along. Um, that's the beauty of, of what we will experience, God willing, in the next few weeks in Basra. Um <clears throat> But the verse I wanted to get to is, is verse 9. It says, in all their affliction of the Israelites, in all their affliction, it says, he was afflicted. How is God afflicted? You, you think God doesn't care when you're, su when you're suffering? It probably, he's probably suffering more in, for seeing you go through this um, than you think. Like, you know, when a parent sees that the, their child suffering or in pain, it, it hurts their heart even more, even though they're not physically in pain, right? How much more God, right? So, so don't think God doesn't care because of your problems. He cares even more. It says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. <clears throat> in his love and his mercy, he redeemed them and he bore them and carried them all the days of old. Sometimes when you look at the history of the Israelites, it doesn't look like God did this to them. But yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so the next time you have a tribulation, welcome it as an opportunity to learn some of these lessons. Um, and that's why we thank God in tribulations, because we have faith that God wants us to grow. He wants us to be healed. He wants us to, to be cleansed. He wants us to be purified from, from a sin. Um, and it's not the suffering of it itself, but it's what is accomplished through it or because of it. Um, <clears throat> if, if it were just the suffering and we're happy for that, no, that's, <laughs> that's, there's something wrong with you mentally if you, if you enjoy suffering. <laughs> but spiritually, um, when we see, okay, maybe God is trying to make something good um, come about from this. So that's where the faith is needed. We, we need fear of God, not fear of the problem. And and that's what um, he rebuked his disciples for. It's like, why are you afraid? You need to fear me, right? And then after he, he calmed the storm, storm, what happened to the disciples? They were afraid of God. <laughs> they were afraid of the Lord Christ um, in a good way, not, not, not in the same way that they um, thought of the storm. Okay? Um, and, and this is what so when we look past the tribulation or past the cross and what it brings, then we're, we're joyful. And Christ, that's why Christ was joyful. when he, you know, he even prayed in Gethsemane asking God to take away this as, as man, right? But he's like, what's, if you take away the cross, what's the purpose of my being here? Right? And as, as St. Paul says uh, in, in the book of Hebrews, <clears throat> he says, um, let, us aside, let, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us, and run with endurance the race, right, <clears throat> that was set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the one who started and the one who will complete, the one who has begun a good work in you and will complete it in the day. Um, <clears throat> because, and, and then he gives the, this example of the cross. It's like, Christ did the same thing. <laughs> the joy that was set before him. What's the joy? You're talking about the cross. Where's the joy in the cross? No, we look past the cross to the resurrection and salvation and, and the healing of mankind. That, that was the joy in, in God's heart. Um, <clears throat> are we willing to go to God? Yes, of course. If, if this is the end result, I, I want it. It's hard for us to, to, to think this way, but th this is what God wants to transform our, our, our uh, vision um, into, into seeing things in this way, not in the physical way, well, for me, I'm sick for 38 years. No, that's not, um, God, why don't you care? That's, that's not the mentality God wants um, his children to have. Um, for, for the joy that was set before him, it endured the cross. So it needs endurance. More than 38 years? Yes, maybe more than 38 years. Um, uh, despising the shame. Okay, so, uh, sorry, to conclude, um, just a few quotes from the Desert Fathers about this endurance. Right? So St. Macarius the Great said, Who is crowned without labor? Who becomes rich without working? Who wins without laboring first? Who is lazy and gathers wealth? Who is idle and does not lose his fortune? It is through numerous sufferings we can enter the heavenly kingdom. That's something we have to accept as Christians. Um, and this is not the happy-go-lucky gospel. There's, there's the part of suffering that has to do with it. Yes, we'll be happy, but... Um, there's going to be sufferings. That's the, that's the fact. And if there's not, then there's probably a problem. Um, maybe there's other lessons we haven't learned yet. And that's why we're not suffering. 
Um, <clears throat> but I think most of us are. <laughs> okay. Um, St. Lachomius, also Desert Father, says, do you think that cutting limbs and burning are the only type of martyrdom? He says, no. It is the pain of tolerating the beating of devils. I, I guess, like with St. Anthony, the demons beat him. It doesn't really happen to us, most of us. Thank God. Um, and accepting sickness with thanksgiving. So accepting, he's saying here, accepting sickness or any problem with thanksgiving is a type of martyrdom. Um, that's the good news for us. Right? He, says, he says, this is martyrdom. Why else would St. Paul write that he was dying daily? Was St. Paul dying di daily physically? No, of course not. He said he was not literally dying, but tolerating with patience whatever came his way. This is carrying the cross. Tolerating with patience whatever comes your way. Not telling God, please change it now. <laughs> that's, that's not the attitude uh, that, that we want. <clears throat> so instead of looking at the problem or even looking to other people or look to ourselves, we look to Christ um, in, in the proper way. Um, <clears throat> so maybe it's that we forgot, not that he is powerful, but he is loving um, the lover of mankind. And he has the power, but sometimes he, he refrains from extending his hand to remove the problem because he's working a different work in us um, for, for his glory and for our health and healing. Um, may the Lord of all give us the endurance so that we can experience the joy after the, the temporary suffering. Glory be to now from the age of Yeah.